the the main thing I would say about improvising is that you know you. I think a lot of people get it in their head that you know at some point you just suddenly know how to improvise because I you know improvising truly is making stuff up on the fly but nobody just starts making stuff up without having the right tools in the toolbox you know kind of like as as little kids we we start to learn words and then we start to kind of learn you know sentences that may not be fully developed yet but they're there's, you know, you understand what the person's trying to say, but they're not completely saying it in the most fluid way, you know, as, as little kids. And then we eventually get to where we can, we can speak full sentences and we don't think about it at all, you know. And playing mandolin is very much that, too. It's like we all improvise when we speak, you know. Even as I'm talking right now, I'm not thinking too far ahead about what I'm saying. I'm just saying it, right? <laughs> without stuttering too much, you know, every now and then we stutter. Same thing with, with playing and, and, you know, I think like learning, learning your scales, learning chords, uh, learning all that stuff is, is su super important, but to really be able to learn to, you know, speak the, the musical language that in this case is, you know, bluegrass fiddle tunes, you really have to, to start learning fiddle tunes, you know, and, um, you know, I think to really be able to to improvise, it's a combination of a lot of things, but you know, I always tell people to learn, learn as many tunes as you possibly can, whether you want to sit around and improvise on fiddle tunes or you want to just be able to play a, mel uh, a melody you know, behind a vocal. Um, I think all that stuff is, is you know, sort of the pathway to being able to learn to kind of string together all these notes that we all know and learn to play via scales and arpeggios and all that stuff, but to really be able to understand the phrasing and, and um, you know, the different syncopations and things like that, that, that you kind of fall back on as an improviser. It's all as a result of all those things that we sit down and we learn first. Spending time. First. Spending, yeah. spending a lot of time. So, so for instance, when I am playing a tune like Cherokee Shuffle, that's a tune that, you know, for one, I've played hundreds of times over the, the years, so I don't have to think too much about how to play the basic melody of it because I've played it so many times in my life. I don't even remember when I learned it, but I know I must have been at least 10 years old, <laughs> you know, so I've played it a lot over the years. So um, I'm very much a melody first kind of a person when I approach <coughs> improvising on something, you know, for instance, the more times that, that John and I would go back and playing it, the more we might keep trying to stretch beyond the things we've just played, you know, taking the melody to a different place. But, but um, I think the very best basic improvising always kind of keeps the melody in mind, you know, at least, at least the first time through and having a good foundation of being able to even like pick up on melody. So even if John said, oh, here's a tune I just wrote, you know, and he played it, I would be trying to get the melody as much as I could in my head and approach whatever I played around that, not just say the song was in D. I wouldn't just be playing right. a bunch of stuff in D. I would be trying to approach it from whatever this melody that he put forth was. And the only way to get good at being able to play the, the melodies quickly, I think, is by training yourself where the notes are at on the instrument in these different keys by learning tunes and solos. Even if you can't get the note note for note exactly. melody, you can follow the contour of it, like where it rises and falls. That's, a, that's, a, that's one thing to think about when you're improvising, you know, and trying to reference the melody. Might not be every little detail or every little stair step uh, scale pattern, but if you can kind of hit the main melody tones, the, a lot of times it's chord tones, that's, a, that's something to shoot for. Yeah. I, uh, my background is in fiddle tunes, and I, I learned a whole bunch of fiddle tunes, but that one is when I, I don't remember every sitting down and, list, and learning. I just was in jam session so many times I kind of got the sense of it so I, I'm not actually sure I play it. The I think that's the case with me for a lot of fiddle tunes though yeah. because that's sort of the cool thing about you know at least bluegrass music and old time music is so much of it is is learned through people sharing tunes in a circle with one another so that certainly mm -hmm. would have been one that I heard in jam sessions right. and and maybe yeah nobody showed me note for note but you kind of pick up a little bit one time and then you hear it again and you well, pick up a little well it's such a strong more. melody it's it's easy it to is. it's not too uh, complicated but i do remember like learning arkansas traveler and soldier's joy and and uh, teetotaler and those kind of totally. tunes note for note but well for instance like you take a, a tune like um, 
like Cherokee Shuffle, like the B part comes to mind where, you know, we may play the first, how do you play the, the opening of the, uh, you the, may play it different part. every time. The field. Something so like that. yeah, so so we may play the uh, say this this was slightly different in the way we'd play it, but we almost we the melody goes up you know to this this soaring high note, and so even little things like that of like picking out like say somebody shows you a tune you've never heard before, or there's a vocal melody in a song that you know goes da da da, you know it's like those are kind of key phrases within a melody that I think, you know, you kind of train your ear to latch on to those, those things. Yeah, I think I, I mapped that out early on, you know, how to get up to that high note. Yeah. Um, I think in improvising, uh, I guess the second chord's F sharp minor, and, and a lot of what my improvising is based on is double stops and, and chord tones. And I think I went to this, which I think of usually as a, like a D double stop, but it also works for, for, uh, for the sixth chord as well. So, so that's a... F sharp and an A, so it's a the third and the fifth of D, but it's also what is that? The third and the root of F sharp minor, right? Mm -hmm. Is that correct? <laughs> so, so I, I know a little bit of chord substitution, so I know that D double stop shape also could be a F sharp minor, and that it's just safe place for me to grab onto, which I know I'm going to be hitting the right frets, you know, sort of position playing. Yeah. The, so on that tune, I did this one thing on the, the ladder solo or on the B part. I, I went to this, uh, treated it more like a, goes to the four chord, the D chord. I was play, treating it like a, a dominant seventh, so a D seventh. Uh, just that kind of thing. And then went into just more of a, a minor pentatonic. Which is kind of a approach that Frank Wakefield uh, used quite a bit, and David Grisman in his early days and and his latter days too, I guess. <laughs> where you, where you substitute uh, a minor scale over a major chord change. So that's what I was doing. Which is really nothing to do with the melody of Cherokee Shuffle. Well, I was going to say, I'll point out that you sort of saved going there till we had played the melody strongly <clears throat> in, in the improvising. Even though we were improvising in bits, we were both really trying to quote the melody quite a bit to get that across. And mm -hmm. like, say, you know, since you kicked off that tune, had he, you know, started just going crazy on it right out of the gate, like, you know. You'd say, this guy's annoying. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> no, but there's there's something about like, you know, Trying to play, um, you know, thinking about playing in good taste, and usually I tend to think like if you're, you know, if you're, um, you know, it doesn't mean that you've played the thing through three times, but say, you know, five people are playing and you've already heard the melody two or three times, and you want to sort of just keep it embellishing on that and and stretching, like that's that's totally cool. I would just encourage you guys when you first start improvising, or at least are really trying to approach you know, tasteful improvising to at least like, you know, be very aware of the melody and, you know, I mean, I know we do play music for ourselves, but, you know, I think we also try to make music to have it be this experience that we share with other people. And I think, you know, giving your listener a chance to kind of appreciate the melody and, and all of its glory rather than it just being a, you know, a bunch of chords in which to play right. stuff over, play your lips, you know, yeah. because that, that can quickly sound just like a lot of stuff. It's really the melodies that, you know, make the song what it is. So I've always, you know, that's yeah. just my personal no, preference. No, I, I've always been a fan of making sure that that comes through at least I agree. in the early I'm, I'm <laughs> behind rounds. you 100%. <laughs>